This is Bo from Pelch Productions. I just wanted to show you DP and Motu interfaces working together with a, a Universal Audio U82 Apollo. Uh, what I have here on the Mac is I have uh, also a Universal uh, Audio U82 Duo card sitting in one of my slots, and I have a PCI. Uh, card that handles uh, extra fire wire buses and that's where the Apollo is uh, is attached to and so the Apollo sits on its own dedicated fire wire bus to make sure we have full bandwidth allotted to the Apollo and also for PCI uh, I have a, a Motu uh, 424 card here uh, that hosts two Motu 1296 interfaces and one 24i and on top of that if you look at the firewire chain um, we do have a we do have a Motu 896 AD sitting on the max internal firewire bus uh, that's firewire uh, 400 so let's go ahead and open up first the Motu audio setup and you can see we have a access to the 89680 and go to mode to PCI auto setup audio setup and you can see I have two 1296s and one 24i now we can go ahead open the UAD meter and control panel and we will see in the system settings here that we do see the Apollo quad and we do see the UAD2 duo now I found that DP opens much faster if I open uh, DP before I actually open the uh, the Universal Audio Apollo console application. So just go ahead and open DP, and that's DP 806 should be latest version as of today. So once DP 8 comes up. There we go. We'll go ahead and launch the console app. Console app comes up. Now, let's go ahead and make a new new session in in DP. So the first thing I will do is go to my setup, uh, configure audio system, and configure hardware driver. And we have set the master device to the Universal Audio Apollo, but I also want to have my Motu interfaces available to me. So what you have to do is let's just unclick those for a moment. So you see the only thing that's that's selected as an audio device right now is the Apollo. Now when I want to add my Motu interfaces to become available to me. I'll simply go ahead and find them, hold down the command key on my keyboard and click on the additional interfaces I want to have available. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now we need to set up a little bit of the routing and that is done in Studio and Bundles. And here you get the Bundles window and you can see here's all the on top is all the inputs that's available th uh, to us through the interfaces. First we have the Universal Apollo, that's the first because it's my master device. Then comes the Modu 896 and then comes the three interfaces that attach to the PCI 424. And here we have the first, the 1296.1, and here we have uh, 1296.2, and here comes the 24i. Okay, now here, uh, because you, you have to think of about the bundles window as a huge huge patch bay. So that's where we will patch the uh, interfaces into into the mixer. Let's just call it the, the console of, of uh, DP. So first let's go ahead and make a couple of um, couple audio tracks. And let's go to the mixing board. I'm so old that I like mixing boards. That's just the way I am. So we'll see here. 
I have two inputs available to me uh, right now. Uh, I have what's called input stream 1.1 and input stream 1.2, which doesn't make that much sense to me, but uh, see, that's what they're called right here. And here, uh, the path space sits, so input stream 1.1 is actually called uh, named right after input stream 1.1 of the Universal Audio Apollo. Now I can go ahead and change that. Just double click on it and I'll call it Apollo Apollo 1. And you'll see the name change in your um, mixing console and DP uh, accordingly. It, we strip to, or we jump to the next one, let's call that Apollo 2. And that will have the input from uh, the Apollo interface, the um, MIC preamp here, uh, channel analog 2. Okay, now I need more because I want to take uh, advantage, say I want to take advantage of all my four preamps in the Apollo, so I'll simply have to click add and um, DP already knows that, okay, let's go to the next one. I'll rename this to Apollo and let's add the last one. Let's go back. Apollo 4. Now you can see the, they're all selected as, as, as mono, but you could change it if you wanted, if you're running a stereo something in here, a stereo signal in to say like uh, uh, channel 3 and 4, you could, let's just delete this one and take this one and change that to a stereo. Now you'll see we we'll uh, DP selects input uh, 3 and 4 as left, right, and my input Apollo 3 becomes a stereo input, so I would, then I of course would change it to something like Apollo 3, 4 if I wanted it to. Now let's go back and just call it three for now, change it back to mono, add another one, Apollo 4, and there we go. Now if, let's just check here, you can see I have now my inputs available, and you can change them, so you can record from what channel you want to record into into DP. Now if I wanted to add, say I wanted to add a, a couple of uh, inputs from my 1296s, I would still add more. Now if you have two options here, you can add or you can add multiple, so you can add multiple and say, oh I need to add say four mono inputs and here's my four mono inputs. Now DP automatically think that they should be uh, consecutive to the ones we, we already did, so, but let's call this uh, 1296 1, 1296 2, 1296, and go from the B, 1296B channel 2. Now what I simply will do is here, I'll just take this one and drag to the 1296 one, channel one, this one, channel two, and this one going from the B one, so that's going to 1296 two, channel one, and this one will be 1296 channel two. And if I wanted to patch in the 24 track, I can add more more bundles here and say, so this is my two inch track one. And that will come in from, that's hooked up to the 24i. So I could add all the, the 24 track from, from the two inch. So there you go. So now you have all these and they're available to you. Okay. So once this is done, I can close my
my bundles windows and uh, let's just look at um, get some signal here so we see we get signal into the two first channels on the UAD console and it goes into two API vision channel strips and we can monitor our levels input gain the output of the channel strip and here's the uh, here's the level of, of the individual channels so I can see they're coming in I have the audio audio monitor uh, small window available to me here in DP right now I can get rid of that if I don't want to have it over there I can just drag in here and get my audio monitor in here here we see all the uh, available to us here in the mini menu we can actually change the level range of our audio meters so I'm only showing the top 6 dB before clip uh, 12 dB scale oh we can see the full range as we were seeing before I like to set it to like 20 so I actually see I have some some decent decent level coming in also in this little mini menu you can change the name of your files that will that the audio files that DP will create when you start recording and as you can see you can have a couple of ways of, of setting those uh, name of those files you can actually set them to either track name which means whatever name of your track that's the name of your file that will be saved to your disk for this audio so if I change this over here hold down the option key and click once I can call it Vox call the second one for GTR now uh, having this being selected as uh, how I base my file names when I start recording the um, let's just try this right now we must select something to record on so we have something coming in here now if we go here and look at our sound bites now we actually see the file name is GGR and Vox and if we go and um, look at them in the finder window you can see this is the name my uh, the files have been named now we can change the file name uh, as you said we could change it to the name of the input which I guess don't would not make much sense but um, for some it might let's just uh, record a little bit let's see so here you see the name of the file input stream now called input stream one one that to me is a little harder to figure out once I if I I get a lot of sessions that has been recorded anywhere else uh, that I have to sort out so I really like these uh, being named of, of what it is uh, then again you can set up here which is a custom file name so so you have options here but I do like just to leave it on on track track name okay uh, uh, one thing let's look at the meter bridge let's click on input so now we are uh, monitoring the inputs coming in from from the console so let's just get a little level here one thing that's that's nice here about the level um, the meter bridge window in DP is that you can change the resolution of your metering so if I go down here to the scale at the bottom you see my cursor changed to a hand I can move it up so now I only see a scale from minus 12 dB to to clip to zero I can do the same thing from the top so I can say my top now is minus 3 dB which I like so everything I record so I see if, if I if I hit anything uh, I, I have to go close there to 3 dB to get uh, the best resolution of, of the files that I, I can get 
so I like to do do it this way so I see all my levels this way but you can change it in many different ways here and right now we're looking at the inputs we look at the bundles we could also start looking adding the outputs and we have the tracks so these are the, the Vox and the, the GTR track that we have so once there's something coming out of those guys we'll start seeing it here if we go back and start playing back now we start seeing the information coming up there let's go back to our sequence now one thing when while this was happening uh, I was hearing some some latency if I was listening because the DAW is sending out let's go back mixing board you see we have the output set now output is still called output stream because we didn't change that if you want to change that we can go back into bundles now we were looking at inputs before if I change this to output you can see I have output stream here I would call it Apollo master and you can see it's a stereo bus and it goes to uh, output one two on the on the Apollo so if we go back here you see it goes to the uh, Apollo master is my output now I'm sending everything comes in here it loops through DP it goes back to the console and gets mixed in with the signal coming in the cool thing about the console here is like QMix from Motu that you can do near a zero latency monitoring when you're recording. So what I need to do here is make sure that the output that the that, that the output from these doesn't loop back to the console. And I could do a couple of things. What I like to do is simply go ahead a track and add a master fader track because I'll need it anyhow sometime. So now these two will be routed through my master fader. And to make sure these go, don't go back, I'll simply just mute this. And now I get rid of any, any latency issue or uh, listening to any latency issues through the console. And that's pretty much what I wanted to show right now. Uh, I hope it helped you a little bit. Uh, let me know. You can always bash me and whatnot in the comments below. Thank you so much. Take care.